I've, I've always been a believer in the struggles men have in their minds, and I've always spoke about it, and I've suffered with them myself. And this is one of the things when I say, like, depression isn't real. People say, oh, you don't understand. Let me, let me counter that argument by saying, I understand very well. Me convincing myself and me deciding that depression isn't real is how I prevent myself from ever feeling depressed. And I can o I've can only constructed that mental model because I've been in situations in my life where I felt depressed. I'm not saying depression isn't real because I've never felt depressed. I'm saying depression isn't real because I've been very depressed. The people don't understand where my mindset comes from. I understand struggle and mental health and all these things. And yeah, jail was another chance to certainly touch on them because in jail, you can, in, sorry, in real life, when you have my kind of resource, you can distract yourself very easily. If you're sitting around and feel a bit mopey, if I'm sitting here and I'm a bit like, oh, I can literally make a phone call and 45 minutes be in the air on my way to anywhere on the planet with whoever I want to do anything I want. So you can distract yourself. I'm not saying it fixes all mental health, but it distracts you. Whereas in jail, you are stuck alone with your thoughts. And it was certainly a test of my mental resolve. And I would say that I passed. I, I did well. I, 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 there was never a day where I broke down. There was never a day where I couldn't handle it. There was never a day where I was, you know, I wasn't polite to the staff. I was very nice to everybody. There was never a day I couldn't hack it. It was certainly a test. And also, you know, Tristan said this. I don't want to take his words, but he's true. You go through life telling everyone you're the baddest motherfucker there is. Sooner or later, someone's going to test you. You walk in the pub and you say, I'm the hardest man there is. Sooner or later, someone's going to fight you. Sooner or later. And life's like that. You want to be the top G and you want to go through life and say, I'm the top G. Then God's going to say, well, we're going to see if you deserve to call yourself the top G or not. We're going to put you in a Romanian jail cell. We're going to leave you there to rot. You're not going to know how long you're in there for. And the biggest mindfuck is I thought I was going to be in there for years. I didn't. I had no idea. Everyone's telling me years, years, years. I thought I was going to be in there for years. So maybe God was just seeing, he was watching me and he was having a look and saying, you want to call yourself top G? Let's see. And I like to think I passed that test. So Tonight, it is what it is. But yeah, I agree with you. In, in terms of mental struggles, yeah, they exist for all men. And I also think that's one of the reasons I'm so large. I talk about those things a lot. I talk about those things a lot with men and I help men with them. And I try and say to men overall that life as a man is pretty shit. And you're going to feel shit for a pretty large percentage of the time. But you're only going to ever escape that if you just perform regardless. You have to perform when you feel bad. As a man, you can't say, I will perform when I feel good. It doesn't work that way because our heads are too complicated and life's too complicated. There's too much on our shoulders and we have too much stress and too much pressure. Our heads are fucked. You have to be the kind of person who says, I perform regardless. I didn't miss a single day's training. I didn't miss a please. I didn't miss a thank you. I'm not saying I was happy. I'm saying I did exactly what I was supposed to do. The worst thing about prison, I think, for everybody else, because there's a lot of men in there who were crying, a lot of men who were having mental breakdowns, I think it is the problem I didn't have, which is knowing that if you're a normal man, you go to jail, and they just pick you up and you go to jail. Who pays the rent? Who's feeding your kids? Who's your wife sleeping with? Like, like, life gets hard for all the external things you could no longer control, things that were your responsibility. I was lucky I didn't have those problems. And when I spoke to people, most people's issues were things that were happening on the outside. And I felt really good knowing that my life is set up in a way where even if I'm plucked from it, it operates. And I set that up because I thought they were going to kill me. Even to this day, if they shoot me right now, everyone around, everything would be okay. I don't have to exist for my life to function. So that was fantastic about jail. The worst thing about jail, I mean, the cockroaches started off really bad, but after a few days, it's amazing how quickly you used to cockroaches just in your bed. <laughs> You're just like, just kick them out of the way. That was kind of bad. But um, not knowing when I'm going to get out, that was bad. Having my name slandered all around the world, that was bad. Not knowing how people are reacting to it. Like the, my first time, month in jail, I didn't know if people believed this garbage or not. I, I had no access to the internet. I didn't see anything. There was a lot about it that was hard. But um, I, I have to believe it's going to make me a better person. Why else would I, why else did I go? What did I go for? To waste three months? To stare at a wall for three months? Is that why I went to jail? No, I must have gone to jail to become a better person. I must have learned something. I have to self-analyze and find the lessons and pick it out. And I think a lot of people don't do that with all the bad situations in their life. And regardless of whether you went to jail or a woman left you or your business failed, whatever it is, you need to analyze the entire situation and say, okay, what can I learn? There's a, there's a big pile of shit here, but there must be a little bit of gold inside. So I've just tried to look at it as a massive learning experience and perhaps as a coping mechanism, but I've found a lot of lessons which I'm implementing. And, uh, and there's a very strong chance they're going to put me back. 
not because I'm guilty, because I haven't done anything wrong, but because I'm currently in the middle of a, a, a judicial system. I'm in, in, I'm in the judicial system of a country. I don't truly understand the language. I don't understand the judicial system. I don't understand the charges against me. I don't understand how any of this can be legal. I don't understand how where it's come from. I don't understand the evidence they believe they have. And here I am stuck in this process. And who knows how it's going to end? There are moments in your life that you feel overwhelmed by life, by people, by your own circumstances, by struggles. We all get knocked down in every aspect of life. Life has a way of humbling you. Life will make you shut up. Life will mute you. You're going to feel awkward and stupid and dumb sometimes. At times you won't want to come out the house. At times you'll be feeling bad and don't know why. What's wrong? I don't know. Just leave me alone. You will cry. You're going to fail and you're going to be in your head. You're going to be saying, I'm not good enough. But it's okay. It goes with the territory. It's a part of the deal. The real challenge of growth comes when you get knocked down. You got to get messed up sometimes. You got to get dirty. You got to get your feelings hurt. You got to get disappointed. You're going to ask somebody for some money. He's going to tell you no. That's just dirt. How you handle it, that's where the growth takes place. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here, I can get me out of this. If somebody came and knocked you down, there ain't nothing you can do about it. But if I come back a week later and you're still on the ground, we got a problem. You can decide that you're going to change, that you're not going to be a wimp. The way you were born, what happened to you is not your fault. But doggone it, you're still on the ground after 20 years? See, you get tripped out because you got dirt on you. But you need dirt on you to develop. If you get knocked down, there's nothing you can do about it. But getting back up has every single thing to do with you. Don't you give up on your dream. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. See, you get mad when haters come your way. You get mad because you get a setback. You get mad because they talking about you. That's dirt. You are not the only person that's been through a divorce, boo. Get over it. You're not the first one they let go of. You won't be the last one. The question is, what you gonna do about it? I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. You can decide that you're going to stand up to life. I just need you to identify what your pain is. And then I need you to ask yourself what you're going to do about it. And maybe you've been knocked down in your life and it seems like, hey, the fight is over. It is not over unless you quit. You can permit it to let it hold you down or you can decide I'm not going to let that happen to me. You have a choice to either give up or get up. You got to get gritty, man. You got to develop some dog in you. You can decide, I'm going to work on myself and develop myself. I'm going to empower me. You have to learn to turn and look at every obstacle as an opportunity. I will not give up. Every time I get knocked down, I will get back up and I will succeed. I love myself enough not to be trapped in the same doggone spot for the rest of my life. No pain, no gain. Pain has a purpose. Your pain ain't permanent. It might last for a second. It might last for a minute. It might last for months. But sooner or later, if you do not surrender, if you do not give up, it will subside. Don't go through it. Grow through it. As pain leaves your body, guess what's going to take its place? Success. You cannot build anything that won't bring a battle. And if you're going through a battle right now, it's only because you're building something. Stop running from your pain and embrace your pain. What will you do with your pain? Will you let it break you or will you let it redefine? Your pain is going to be a part of your prize. I challenge you to push yourself. You want affirmation, look yourself in the mirror and say, I think I can, I know I can. You've got to decide to be relentless. You've got to decide never to give up. Do whatever it takes. You your biggest driver. You've got to find some reasons within yourself that will give you the stamina when life catches you on the blind side to keep on calling and coming back again and again and again. You see, the fight's not over if you've been knocked down. It's only over if you quit. Because life is a fight. It's a fight for integrity, your goals, your dreams, your ambitions. So every morning, I've got to wake up and I've got to fight. 
You gonna quit or you gonna make it to yourself? You gonna quit or you gonna make it to your goal? So you can stop waiting for it, you can stop wishing for it, and you can get on with the rest of your life. I gotta fight for my dreams. I gotta fight for character. I gotta fight for integrity. When you get to the point where enough is enough, doors start opening, opportunities start happening. But what you cannot do is you cannot quit doing the process. All I'm saying is don't quit. I just say don't rest. Mentally, you can stay connected. But to win fights, you got to have stamina. You got to be ready to fight and bounce back. You better not feel sorry for yourself. You better get up and fight. And some of you are not successful because every single time you run up against a trial, you stop. I need you to match whatever effort the enemy is putting up. Match the doggone effort. I'm going to think. I'm going to execute. And I'm going to win. And that's how you get to the next level. You cannot give up because it ain't what you see. You cannot give up. It's when you have nothing left. It's when you depleted all your money. When you have nothing left, that's when it's showtime. At the end of the day is your promise. So stop crying about it and use your energy to get through it. When you find a way out of no way, when you find breath that you don't have, when you want this thing as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you find a way. I cannot stop what happens to me, but I can dictate how I respond. I invested too much to quit. So when life happens, I don't just sit there and cry. I brought back. Because all of us, if you live long enough, will go through a period of feeling so overwhelmed. Sooner or later you feel, oh God, just get me out of this. I wish I could tell you it's going to get easier. I wish I could tell you that, but that's not the truth. The truth is you got to find something within. Life's going to whip your butt. Life is going to bully you. Stop crying. Let it hit you. But don't let it punk you. And when you find out what your why is, when you find your why, you find a way to make it happen. And I'm telling you right now, don't give up. Don't give in. Get through it. I don't care if you're sick. I don't care what you're going through. If you're not dead, he ain't through with you yet. As long as there's breath in your nostrils, you're still in the game. You're going to be here one day, but you'll never get here if you give up. As long as there's breath in your nostrils, you still can win. And finally, guys, you got to want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe. And you will promise me that from this day forward, you will not be defeated. Somebody holler, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Don't count me out. I may be sick, I may be crazy, I may be confused, but I'm not dead yet. Some people live in the cemetery of their failures. And I want to say to somebody who's fallen, or everybody hates you, and everybody walked away from you, don't live where they left you. Nudge somebody and tell them I will not die here. Whatever it takes for me to get out, I got to get out of here. I will not die on drugs. I will not die in depression. I will not die where you met me. Number one motivating thing for me, and I'm just being honest, was I was sick and tired of being poor. My mother was poor, my father was poor, my brothers and sisters were poor. I lived in a poor neighborhood, we lived in a poor house. And I was, you know, like at Christmas time, my father would put us in the car and take us out to the suburbs to see the Christmas lights. And I would see these big houses, man. I told my father, I said, Dad, I said, why don't we get one of these houses? He said, boy, I ain't got no money for this kind of house. He said, but if you work hard, you can make some money, you can buy you one of these houses. My motivation was to buy a big house so I could put up Christmas lights. And I always dreamed of buying my mother and father a real house. And before they died, I was able to do all of that. You have to find a dream that's so big that it overwhelms all of your fears and causes you to never give up. Always go to something bigger than yourself. I'm wondering if you've been defeated because you have been giving yourself wholly to something that was too small to hold you. Are you trying to take a bath in a bowl? Are you not guilty of immersing yourself into things that were too small to hold your vision? Why you keep imagining buying a house 
Why do you keep imagining getting rich one day? Why do you keep imagining that? Because God is talking to you. You got to start believing in your imagination. I can't stand quitters. So if you're the kind of person who's going to quit because it's hard, I don't even want your energy around me because quitters are the worst people on the planet. You can give a quitter absolutely everything and they will still fail. Quitters can have every single advantage. Quitters can have all the information. Quitters can have all the tutelage. Quitters can have a, a mentorship. Quitters can have someone who messages them every morning. Hey, bro, let's get it. And guess what they're going to do at the end? Quit. Quit. <laughs> they ain't never going to have shit, right? You need the people who don't quit. I don't quit. Every single facet of my life is testament to the fact that I don't quit. When people see my plane in the sky, you can you can say whatever you want about me. You can call me arrogant. You can call me anything you want, but you cannot call me a quitter. I didn't quit. So that's the difference. When it was hard, I did it anyway. That's who I've always been. And if you don't have that kind of tenacity, you're never going to be anything. So the people who come along and talk about passive income, they sound like quitters. They sound like people who don't want to work. You have to just work. At some point, you have to bite the bullet and just work. So when someone comes to me and talk about passive income and they're a brokey, I'm like, you are just lazy. You are lazy. You will never get anywhere. Lazy people never get anywhere in life. doesn't matter what it is. It matter if it's tennis or money. If you're lazy, you're never going to get it. I love work. I'm ready to work. I'll dig a hole. If you start with a good team, you're going to make it. That's really true. Brother, brotherhood in and of itself is so valuable. If you sit around with 20 people and none of them are lazy and none of them are snakes, you're going to be fine. I think follow your passion is also a terrible, terrible piece of advice. People say, hey man, you need to find your what you're passionate about and do that. And what they're trying to say is only do what you like because you have no motivation to do anything else. And motivation in, in and of itself is a scam. I don't believe in motivation. I believe in discipline. I am not motivated to do the things I'm supposed to do. I don't wake up full of like joy. I have to go to the gym or that I have to work or not do any crap. I don't feel motivated to do them. I'm disciplined. I do them regardless of how I feel. Whether I'm in the mood to do it or I'm not in the mood to do it, it gets done. That's discipline. Discipline's a real thing. Motivation is fleeting. Yeah. You're never going to be permanently motivated. So when someone comes along and says, oh, do what you're passionate about, what they're saying is you'll have endless motivation, and then you'll be able to try hard. If you're the kind of person who can only try hard at something he enjoys, then you're going to fail. Because most things you enjoy don't pay any money. If they paid money, you wouldn't enjoy them. It's called a job, right? Nobody likes their job. You like your hobby. I'm sure you like playing video games. Maybe 1%, 0.1% can make money from video games, right? Most people, you ain't ever going to make it. Yeah. Do you think the guy in China who owns a concrete plant is passionate about concrete? It's money. Be passionate about success. If you're passionate about money, then you can be passionate about anything. I'll be passionate about any business on earth that pays me. If you pay me a billion dollars to dig that hole, I'll be very passionate about that hole. I will dig that hole with passion. I think the world is a violent place. I think there's violence all around us. I think that I view the world in a violent way. And I, I don't mean that in a negative context. I say a lot of things and people take them as negative, but I see them as positive. Mm. Like I say I'm an angry person and people imagine me like I'm happy. Yeah. I'm super happy, but I'm angry. Angry is motivated. You can't sleep if you're angry, so you better work. Right? So I'm an angry guy, but I'm a happy guy. If, if I sit in a coffee shop, right? If I sit in Starbucks, the whole time I'm in there, not only am I thinking about how they got the money from me and how much I spent, I'm thinking about how I could outcompete them. I'd sit there and go, okay, cool. I'm in Starbucks. I spent five pounds, 68. I got a latte and I got a donut and I'm sitting here. And that business place, that, that, that commercial property right across the street is available for lease. How could I outcompete this coffee shop which just took my money? What's the profit margin on this five pounds, 68? How much did this cost them? The coffee, pennies. Donut, 30 p. How much is the rent? How much is the business rates? If I had to open up there, how would I attract people to come into my shop as opposed to their shop? They got a big brand name. I'm brand new. Next thing, do they have any signage outside? No, I'm going to try and put some signage outside. Do they have parking? No, I need parking. But you just start thinking about how you can convince people to give you their money as opposed to giving it to the places they already give it. People say, I can't think of how to make money. If you start doing that for a year and just keep a notepad, you'll have a hundred ideas on how to make money. You'll sit there and go, there's a place here that's doing this and we could do it better this way. This place online is doing this. We can do it better this way. And then, and then to get them all done, what do you need? Network. You need people. It's all about people. Okay, we can make money with this. Who's going to do it? Who's not lazy? Who's going to put 4 a.m. tomorrow? Boom. Let's get it done. So there's unlimited ways to make money, but most people go through life and their money is taken from them. They don't even identify how it got, how they got tricked out of it. The business is just other people's money. That's all business is. I want to start a business. So you want other people's money. You have to think about it. Nobody thinks about it. 
And the easiest way to think about it is to think how you're giving yours. That's, 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 that's a mental model you should adopt. Yeah. And you'll end up with loads of business ideas. Businesses, business ideas are, are everywhere. It's just execution, which is different. At the end of the day, even if you're struggling, it's you that's going to have to get up and get the work done and change your life. So when they go on the TV and say, you're depressed, it's a disease, you can't fix it, there's nothing you can do about it, it's not your fault. I think they're just trying to reinforce in your mind that you're never gonna get better. I think if they really cared, they'd say, like Tyson Fury says, you're depressed, but you can beat this, you can do this. I don't hear them saying that very often. They just sit there and say, everyone's depressed and it's normal, accept it. And I don't accept that. I don't accept that. I don't think people should sit there and accept that they're sad. Change it. They think only you can change it, that's what I do. But I actually think the world is quite a bleak place. Yeah. It, for men nowadays, I think that the the societal path they've laid out for most men is a sad one. I think that all men like the idea of conquest and like the idea of being high status and being rich. And they're telling you that you shouldn't be those things and you shouldn't do those things. You should just go to school, get a wife, sit at home, happy wife, happy life. That and it's depressing and it's unhappy. And I promise everyone that there is a degree of happiness, but as a man, that happiness comes from freedom. And freedom does require money at some level. And you're gonna to have to get out there and get paid if you wanna be free as an individual. And once you're free, you're gonna be here. When I talk about the matrix, I'm talking about the systems which have been created by society, which are deliberately designed to enslave. In the movie, the matrix were used for our body heat, but here it's in this matrix, we're used for our efforts and our energies. And you're existing inside of a system which is deliberately rigged to make the rich richer and for the poor to stay poor. Yeah. And for you can sit there and get upset about it. You can sit there and cry about it and say the system needs to change, which is what some people do with socialists, X, Y, Z. But I think that's not, I think, I know that's a waste of time, right? That's futile. The best thing to do is to understand the rules of the game and find a way to win. So yes, the game is rigged. Yes, the richer are always going to get richer. Yes, the poor are always going to struggle. And that's the way the game is set up. So you still need to find the best move on the chessboard. There's no point sitting there saying, I want to play a different game because that's never going to happen. Because the people with the money are the people who have the control and they have the power and why would they have the game set up any other way? Why would they change? you got to be in a good position to take advantage of this. So you've always got to be in a position where you have a good network, you have good information, you have some kind of liquid money, you have the ability to survive without that money, you can take a risk. Like it's hard to set yourself up. They teach you things that the problem is as well is difficult because the way that humans work and the way that we are, we've evolved as a species is that we don't really learn lessons unless they're learned the hard way. I believe that unless a lesson has taught the hard way, you're not going to learn it. You can have so many near misses and people won't learn their lesson. Bro, you must know a guy who goes out there, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, doesn't slow his ass down till he wrecks it. Yeah. Like, this is how people are, right? So you need that pain for the lesson to sting enough to really genuinely go inside of your mind. And it's the same with everything. It's the same with driving a car or business. Truthfully, if you want to learn a lesson about business, you're going to have to suffer at some point, right? I don't know what you've been through. I don't know how bad it hurts you. Maybe you've been through something you don't understand. Life hasn't turned out the way you'd hoped. It's painful. But I came to tell you what you are going through right now is not how your story is supposed to end. This ain't your life right here. This life you got right now, this ain't just it. You think this it? God ain't through with you. Pain is a part of life. We've all been through things that are uncomfortable. We didn't like it, but God made a way when we didn't see a way. And even though it's painful now, if you'll stay in faith, that will lead you towards your destiny. For those of you that have experienced some hardships, don't give up on your dream. Anybody can give up. But you know what that's doing? Wasting your pain. It's very easy to find a reason to quit. Quitting is a very simple habit. You do it once, you'll do it again. By the way, fighting through and winning is also a habit. Anything worthwhile takes sacrifice and time. We've all heard the saying, no pain, no gain. Every struggle is making you stronger. Every painful time, it's developing something in you that can only be developed in the tough times. That opposition, those obstacles, that's how you become stronger. We were not created to float through life on flowery beds of ease. Now quit telling yourself you can't take it. You're not weak, you are well able. I'm gonna keep a good attitude knowing that this pain is leading to my gain. The scripture says, rain falls on the just and the unjust. 
The key is what we do in our times of pain. You can come out bitter or you can come out better. My challenge, don't just go through it, grow through it. We let the conditions around us convince us that we can't reach what we're trying to reach because of circumstances beyond our control. You got to show up for your life regardless of the circumstances. You got to show up in spite of the conversation going on in your mind. Because if you don't, nobody else will. 90% of the things entrepreneurs do who win big, no one ever sees. But the same goes for the people that don't make it. No one sees that you're not working. No one sees that you're sitting home watching TV. Only you see that, but there's a key. Time, sacrifice, and effort. There's a patience that goes with that. The process shapes you before it rewards you. So you, who you become in the process is by far more valuable than all the valuables you'll ever make. And here's why. The greatest value in life is not what you get. The greatest value in life is what you become. Our problem today is that we have generations of people who like to talk about increase and expansion, but they think like decrease and survival. Yes, God has empowered you, but he didn't empower you to be a survivor. He empowered you to be a succeeder. God did not create us to give up when it gets hard. And if you will shake off the self-pity, then God will not only bring you out, He will bring you out better off than you were before. We've all had bad breaks. We can all find a reason to live offended, press past those lonely nights. Amazing things await you if you just don't settle. Don't let good enough become good enough. Get your fire back and go after the destiny that belongs to you. If you're going to fulfill your destiny, you have to have a made-up mind that no matter what comes against you, you're going to keep pressing forward looking for your next victory. Don't judge where your situation is right now. You gotta create an environment for you to win. Eight out of 10 millionaires have been financially bankrupt. You know why? They defied the odds. When one door closes, another door opens. When something happens to you and interrupt what you are now doing, you can make a decision, you know what? I'm gonna still find a way to win.